Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos that we are calling Golden Nuggets to Improve Your Business Using Landworks CAD. Now Landworks CAD is a powerful and professional software and it has a clean, logical and well thought out user interface. So given a little practice, you'll know just where to look for the commands that you need without being overwhelmed by a mass of dialog boxes or menu bars. For instance, this is your drawing window. This is where you'll be conducting all of your drawing activities. To make the most of the size of your screen, just make sure that your program is maximized by using the maximize button here, and that the window you're drawing in is also maximized. This gives you the greatest area to do the drawing in without too many other distractions around the screen. In the middle of the screen, you'll notice what's called a work plane. Now the work plane helps you to understand where you are in 3D space and also the X axes and the Y axes when you are in need of entering coordinates. Sometimes this can be a little distracting, so just double click on it and untick this particular option of displaying work planes, select OK and the display of that work plane will just disappear. Now like most programs that you're working on on your computer, Landworks CAD is made up of drop-down or pull-down menus, textual based, okay, that you can choose from, and also icon menus. The icon menus in Landworks CAD are grouped, so we'll have drawing icons located in the first bank of icons, an assistant set of icons, these are items that you can select whilst you're in the middle of drawing, and a set of coordinate entries where you'll enter your X, Y, and if you're in 3D, your Z coordinate coordinates. If you are looking at distance and angle, you'll click here and get D for distance and A for angle. If you click again, you also have bearing and length, but we'll cover that in more detail a little bit later. And here is an important item, especially for those who are beginning, because this is called the prompt. It tells you what the software is expecting of you. So you'll look here very regularly until you get completely familiar with the software because this really does help you to understand what you should be doing next uh, essentially because the software will be prompting you that's why it's called the prompt. Down the left hand side are tools that are specific to the task of landscape design and landscape architecture. These are real productivity tools and unlike these tools at the top which are all general purpose and can be used for drawing anything at all these tools are really only for landscape related tasks. At the bottom of your screen is where you will set things such as your colour. This is where you'll choose your colours. And this is where you will choose your layer. A layer is like a means of classifying or separating the things that you're drawing. This is where you will make style changes or selections solid lines, dashed lines, dotted and dashed and so on, and also the light and line thickness. Here too, you can also delete selected objects, you can undo mistakes that you've made or step back, and you can also step forward and redo an undo operation. The menus in the icons are also very logical. If I wish to draw a line, for instance, I will select from the top row, the primary row, the line commands. And underneath I'm presented with a series of methods by which I can insert lines. If I wish to draw circles, then from the top row, the primary row, I'll select circle commands. And underneath I'm presented with a variety of methods by which to insert circles. That logic is carried through for all of the menus. So now that we have a basic understanding of the interface, let's just use one of the interface items to help us set up a method by which to do some drawing. Down the bottom here is the grid options tool. By selecting it, we get the opportunity to set a grid. Now a grid in this program enables you to snap to predetermined points. So in this case, we're accepting 100 millimeters in the X direction, 100 millimeters in the y direction with a reference grid that is slightly larger points that we'll see on screen every 10 of these. We can snap to those grid points and we can choose to either display or not display the grid itself. 
We select OK and we're presented with the grid. Using the wheel on top of my mouse, when I roll the wheel towards me, I bring the drawing closer and the grid points obviously get closer to me. If I roll my mouse wheel away from me, the grid points move away. There is no limit to how far away you can go, although once the grid points get so close that they would form a black blob, they literally disappear. So bring them closer again, which I'm doing now with the wheel on my mouse. Let's start to do some drawing. Choose the line commands, pick the first item, insert a line, and as I click, no matter where I click, I will be, and close in on that, locked to one of the grid points because we've got the snapping switched on. Now we can double check whether snapping is or is not switched on by literally just looking at the top of the screen. Right across the top here it says that the grid snap is on. So it's an easy indicator to know that that fact is on or that that situation is in place. As we click around we can still zoom out if required and zoom in. Where we place our mouse when zooming, so if I click here, or don't click here, if I just hold my mouse at this location and zoom, then I will be zooming in around that point. If I zoom out, then I'll be zooming out around that point. If I come down here and I zoom in, then my focus will be down here. So let's just add a few additional lines, zoom right out, and finish off the shape that we were originally drawing. Now I'm still in drawing mode, it's still expecting me to continue to draw. In fact, the prompt is asking me to do so, select the end of the line, so it would assume that I want to continue, but I don't want to continue, so what do I do? I simply right click with the right mouse button. That lets go of this line sequence. The software is now expecting me to continue with that command. In Landworks CAD, you don't have to reselect a command. It will always assume that you wish to repeat it until you click more than one time. So let's just repeat this process. We'll go around here and build a very simple outline around this particular shape. And right click to finish. It's assuming I wish to continue, but if I right click one more time, it no longer is requesting me to draw a line or find the endpoint of a line but it is asking me to select either another command or select one of the entities that I've already drawn. To move your drawing around the screen, hold down the mouse wheel and simply move your mouse around. And you'll be able to move the object or move the screen around. Basically, you are looking through a window at an infinite space beneath. To select an object, simply hold your cursor over that object until a diamond appears then click and the object is selected. If you select a second object, the first one is immediately let go. However, if you wish to select more than one object, hold down the Shift or Control key and then select the additional objects that you wish to have included in your selection set. You can either individually click on each item, careful not to move the items as you're clicking, or you can drag a window around the objects that you wish to select. Now, when using the window method, only objects or entities that are 100% contained inside the window will be selected. So when I let go of the mouse, it'll only select lines that are 100% inside my window that I've drawn from left to right. This line, this line, and these two lines were not 100% contained within the window. If I wish to deselect an object, again, still holding the Shift or Control key, I simply reselect a selected object and it becomes removed from the selection set. If I click outside, then it will deselect everything. As you can see, it's a very simple way to grab things. If I wish to select everything outside of my selection area, I would drag my window from right to left. Only objects that are 100% outside of the window will get selected. And in this case, only these lines were 100% outside of the box that I drew. Once selected, objects can either be moved by clicking and dragging on them, 
or other activities can take place such as changing their color and line thickness. Here I have these lines selected. Choose the colors. I'll bring that color box up. We'll pick this pink color and select OK. Nothing appears to have happened yet because this is, a, is still a selected object. And let's also change its line weight or thickness to one millimeter and select OK. Right click to finish. And now you have the lines that we moved and selected and changed.